the Chinese Communist Party covered up the coronavirus. But they had no choice. That's just how their system works. And now, people are dying. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark, because you should be using a reliable VPN whenever you go online. Close to 200,000 people around the world have died from the coronavirus. And it originally spread because the Chinese Communist Party covered it up during the very early stages. That's why I've been calling it the CCP virus. If the CCP had properly handled it better in the first two months, a lot of lives would have been saved. But the cover-up was a symptom of a much deeper problem. That is, the entire structure and MO of the Communist Party, from top to bottom, encourages this exact type of cover-up. The problem lies in the one-party system. The Chinese Communist Party tries to be all-powerful. It exercises extreme control over every aspect of its citizens' lives, from what they can see on social media to even how many children they can have. In this type of system, the party takes all the credit when things go well. But it should also bear all the blame when things go badly. With great power comes great responsibility. Except the party is the opposite of Spider-Man, because it wants to have all the power and not take any responsibility especially when things go wrong. That's why the party is obsessed with stability. The government is constantly talking about stability maintenance, which is coded language for ensuring the party's rule. Since 2011, the Chinese government's internal security budget, which is also known as their stability maintenance budget, has been larger than their military budget. So the Communist Party considers any threat to stability as a threat to their rule. You know what's a threat to stability? A deadly epidemic. So when it came down to it, the Communist Party put stability ahead of helping sick citizens. It's just what they do. For example, the Chinese Communist Party still claims that the 2003 SARS epidemic struck suddenly and they had no time to prepare. In reality, the first cases happened in Guangdong province in late November 2002. Chinese officials didn't inform the World Health Organization about SARS until February 2003. And when it started to spread to other regions of China, they covered that up too. Officially, SARS killed just under 800 people in China. But in reality, it may have been several thousand more than that because of the cover-up. This is Dr. Jiang Yanyong. In April 2003, he wrote a letter exposing the true number of SARS patients in Beijing, which was several times higher than the official number. His letter was publicized by Western media. The party was forced to respond. They fired several Beijing officials, and they put Dr. Jiang under surveillance. And to this day, the Communist Party has still not admitted there was a SARS cover-up. But afterwards, the Chinese Communist Party did create what was supposed to be a fail-safe system to track contagions. It failed. The system they put in place focused on having doctors across China put patient data into a centralized database. This way, central authorities could monitor if there are any new outbreaks. It works great, at least in theory. Last July, 8,000 Chinese health officials even conducted a massive online drill focusing on how to handle an infectious disease outbreak in the style of SARS. The officials raced to test how quickly and effectively they could track, identify, and contain the virus, including by notifying Beijing. It worked in the simulation, but as we've seen over the last few months, it did not work in reality. That's because the Chinese Communist Party's political apparatus makes it impossible for even the best designed system to function properly. After doctors in Wuhan began treating clusters of patients stricken with a mysterious pneumonia in December, the reporting was supposed to have been automatic. Instead, hospitals deferred to local health officials who, over a political aversion to sharing bad news, withheld information about cases 
from the national reporting system, keeping Beijing in the dark and delaying the response. So the official system failed. And when doctors tried to share information through unofficial channels, like Dr. Li Wenliang, they were accused of spreading rumors. Police eventually forced Dr. Li to sign this statement admitting to illegal behavior, including publishing untrue discourse on the internet. You see, because of the party's top-down system, any unofficial information is dangerous. Rumors are a threat to stability. Anyone who speaks out is a troublemaker, like Dr. Jiang during SARS or Dr. Li during the CCP virus. Three weeks after Dr. Li's warning, Wuhan should have looked like this, with authorities diligently preparing for the worst. Instead, it looked like this as local authorities held a massive potluck banquet for 10,000 families on January 19th, nearly three weeks after Dr. Li Wenliang tried to warn people. See, it didn't matter how advanced China's outbreak reporting mechanisms were if no one reports anything. Hospital officials didn't want to get in trouble with local officials. Local officials didn't want to get in trouble with Beijing. The Chinese Communist Party itself can never be wrong. So whenever something goes wrong in China, lower level officials become the scapegoat, which means they're afraid to do anything. Everything's fine in Wuhan. There's no epidemic here. Of course, when it turns out there is an epidemic, local officials get fired anyway. Another problem with the Communist Party's centralized control is that they can't let anybody else help during a disaster, like civil society groups, churches, or nonprofits, or in other words, its own people. Even the Red Cross Society of China is controlled by the government. It's also notoriously corrupt. The party also doesn't want outside experts to help. So when experts from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization offered to help China, they were ignored for weeks. Meanwhile, Chinese state-run media repeatedly published articles in mid-January claiming the virus was preventable and controllable. And then Chinese authorities shut down the laboratory that first shared the coronavirus genome with the world for political rectification. So this wasn't just a mistake by a few local officials. The Chinese Communist Party itself, from top to bottom, was involved in the cover-up. The Chinese communist system is corrupt. This report by the Associated Press says that top leaders, including Xi Jinping, knew that China was facing a serious pandemic in mid-January, but did not disclose the extent of it to the public for six days. In those six days, at least 3,000 people got infected, and that was enough to allow the coronavirus to spread out of control. On a government teleconference on January 14th, the head of China's National Health Commission, Ma Xiaowei, said that the epidemic situation is still severe and complex, the most severe challenge since SARS in 2003, and is likely to develop into a major public health event. Now, you might think the implication here is, okay, it's time to warn the public and stop this thing before it spreads further. But instead, in the memo, Ma demanded officials unite around Xi Jinping and made clear that political considerations and social stability were key priorities during the long lead up to China's two biggest political meetings of the year in March. So basically, China's top health official said that political considerations and stability were more important than alerting the public. Not that it helped, since the CCP had to cancel those two big political meetings anyway because of the coronavirus. Ironically, the cancellation was as a direct result of the CCP emphasizing their political considerations. The Chinese communist system rewards cover-ups and punishes truth. This isn't a new thing. When millions of people starved to death during the so-called Great Leap Forward of the 1950s, local officials who lied and told Mao Zedong that everything was great got promoted. Especially the liar who told Mao that hat looks great. In the late 90s, the governor of Henan province, this guy, 
helped cover up a massive AIDS epidemic. Thousands of farmers got HIV through a botched government blood plasma program. Did he get punished? No, he got promoted. Now he's the second highest ranking member of the Communist Party, where he's in a great position to lie to world health authorities. In Communist China, people who are skilled at lying and covering things up rise through the ranks. People who insist on telling the truth typically don't make it very far. Individuals in China who tell the truth are often flat out punished, like Dr. Li Wenliang, or they're sent to jail, or even forced to make confessions on state-run television. So it's only natural that when a deadly virus spreads, the Communist Party's first reaction is to cover it up. And it's not like they've learned their lesson this time. U.S. intelligence says the Chinese Communist Party is still covering up how many people are dying from the coronavirus. So when some media suggests that China's virus strategy could be a model for the rest of the world, or that it makes China's model look better and better, they must think that the Chinese Communist Party's 90-year track record of lying and covering things up is somehow over. Pro tip, it's not over. Although, according to the Chinese Communist Party, there has never been a cover-up of the coronavirus outbreak. So we're at the point where they're covering up the cover-up. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. You should use a VPN like Surfshark to protect your identity whenever you go online. And if you want to go online in mainland China, you need a VPN just to access the rest of the internet. And if you want to share truthful information online in China, you had better protect yourself with a VPN so authorities don't come arrest you. And even in a free country, everything you do online is being tracked and logged by the websites you visit and your internet service provider. So protect yourself with Surfshark. When you use Surfshark's clean web mode, you'll be protected from ads, trackers, and malware. Plus, with Surfshark, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get 83% off a two-year plan and one extra month free. Protect yourself online today. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.